Hello, Internet! So nice to see you! The Neapolitan chord is one of the most used and best sounding chromatic chords. What is a chromatic chord? It's a chord that contains notes that are technically out of the key, but the chord is still used in a specific key. Now, later, I will give you all the practical tips to use this Neapolitan chord. But since most people misunderstand how to use the Neapolitan chord or confuse it with other chords, let's see how these chords come to be. Understanding where these chords come from is important so that you will use it in the right way and in the right context. So here we go. Let's start simple. Let's say we play a 1-4-5 chord progression in A major. In this case, 1 is A, 4 is D, 5 is E, and 1 is A again. And the chord progression sounds this way. It sounds good, and it resolves really well on the last chord, which is A, the first chord of the key. There is tension and resolution, and this gives a certain kind of satisfaction to the listener. The chord progression sounds complete. Now let's do the exact same thing in the A minor key. So again, I'll have a 1-4-5-1 chord progression, and in natural minor, my chords are A minor, D minor, E minor, and A minor. The first thing you notice is that there is much less tension on the V chord, the E minor in this case. This is cool if this is the sound you want. It's not that this sound is illegal or not legit. It's a good sound, and if you want that, it's great. But sometimes you do want a bit more punch to your chord progression. You want more tension in that chord so that it resolves better when you play the first chord. You get more tension and resolution from this chord progression. This is why sometimes we take the fifth chord not from the A natural minor, but we take it from the harmonic minor. The harmonic minor scale is like the natural minor scale, which is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but in the harmonic minor we sharp, we raise the last note of the scale, which is G, and we take it to a G sharp. So now the fifth chord is not E minor, E, G, B anymore, it's E major, E, G sharp, B, and sometimes, in fact, we use the E dominant seventh chord, E, G sharp, B, D. This gives much more punch to the resolution. Listen here to A minor, D minor, E, A minor. This is great and this sounds good, but now, at least to my ear, we just shifted the problem. The fifth chord is strong, it has some tension, and it resolves really well to the first chord. But now the weak link in the chain is the fourth chord, the D minor. And again, weak does not mean bad. Weak is cool if you like the sound. But again, sometimes you want more. You want more tension out of that chord. That D minor sounds simply too relaxed. We want something with more tension. So what do we do in this case? Well, one solution, and the one that in a moment will take us to the Neapolitan chord, is to alter this fourth chord, this D minor. And alter it means simply that we're going to change one or more notes so that it sounds different, but not too different. A possible way to do this is to identify which is the weak note, which is the note in this chord that has the less tension. The D minor is made by the notes D, F, A. The note that has the less tension in the context of the key of A is the A note, because this note is the tonic of the whole key. By definition, the tonic of the key is the note with the less tension. So this A note is actually a good candidate for a note to alter, to change, to make the D minor chord more tense and more interesting. So you can do this. You can raise this note from A to B flat. So before you had the notes D, F, A, now you have the notes D, F, B flat. As we can hear, this B flat gives 
substantially more tension to the code and makes it more interesting. It still has the same harmonic meaning, or if you want, the same function of the previous chord, but it is more tense. Now, if we have a look at those three notes, D, F, B flat, we see that this looks like a B flat major chord. That is, this will be the flat second chord, or if you want, the major chord built on the note that is a half step above the tonic of the key. Not only that, but this chord is in first inversion. That is to say, the third of the chord, which is the D, is at the bass. This is the Neapolitan chord. Since usually we play this D minor chord in root position, that is, with the D note at the bass, then, normally, the Neapolitan chord that results when we alter this chord will have the D at the base, so it will be a B flat in first inversion. Sometimes you hear the Neapolitan chord being called the Neapolitan 6. This is because in the old continuo notation used in the Baroque times, a chord of the sixth is simply a chord in first inversion. It's called this way because the interval between the D note and the B flat note, that is the third of the chord and the root of the chord when it's not at the bass, it's a sixth, an interval of a sixth. In this case, it's a minor sixth, to be precise. But what we care about are not names. What we care about is what does the Neapolitan chord do to our progression. Well, as you can see right now, the tension profile of the chord progression is more interesting. It's not weak as before. There is no weak link in the chain anymore. Now you have the A minor chord being the rest chord, the Neapolitan chord giving tension, then the fifth chord giving even more tension, and then it resolves to the first chord again. So again, the tension profile here has more punch than before. And if this is what you want to go for, it sounds great. But there is more to it than that. If we write down the notes in every chord, we notice a very interesting thing. Because you see, the A minor chord has notes A, C, E. The Neapolitan chord, again, it's D, F, B flat. The E, taken from the harmonic minor, the E major, it's E, G sharp, B. And then all these resolve again to the A minor chord A, C, E. So you see now, in the progression, we have a double chromatic neighbor to the tonic, meaning that the Neapolitan chord contains the B flat note, which is not in the original natural minor scale, and this B flat is just a half step distant from the tonic of the scale. And the E chord contains the G sharp note, which is again not in the original natural minor scale, it's in the harmonic minor scale, and again it's just a half step away from the tonic of the key. So, when we play this chord progression, we are playing the tonic of the key A, then we are playing the note just a half step above that, the note just a half step below that, and the tonic again. Now, we've seen how this chord works in a minor key, but of course, I can use this chord in major too, and it sounds great. In this case, again, the Neapolitan chord is used just before the dominant chord, and can be put after any other chord, but it's quite typical to put the Neapolitan chord after the fourth chord in the key. So, in A major, a typical progression will be to play a, which is the first chord, D, which is the fourth chord, B flat, which is the Neapolitan, and then E seventh, which is the dominant or fifth chord of the key. Notice how the D chord contains a D note, the B flat chord contains a D note, and the E seventh chord contains a D note, and how these common D notes lead very smoothly from the D to the B flat to the E7, and then this D will resolve down to the C sharp, which is the third in A major. And yes, of course, in this case, I'm using the Neapolitan chord in root position as opposed to the first inversion, because we can use this chord in any inversion. There is no problem. Even if it's more commonly used in first inversion, this does not mean that you can use it only in first inversion, quite the contrary. This is just the basic way to use the Neapolitan chord. There are, of course, several more ways to use it, and several different sounds you can take out of those chords in the right context, in the right chord progression, using the right 
chord voicing and the right voice leading. For all these, I refer you to my course Complete Chord Mastery, which is not a book, it's a complete video course written by guitar players for guitar players where we do all our harmony on the fretboard directly. In here, I do talk about the Neapolitan chord, and I talk about many other chords, chromatic or diatonic, and different ways to use those chords to create incredibly good sounding chord progression. If you want to really master your harmony on guitar, click on the link on the top right and check out Complete Chord Mastery. If you like this video, smash on that like button and don't forget to subscribe and do click on notification, otherwise YouTube will not let you know when I put up a new video. And if you have any suggestions, feedback, comments, please write them down in the comments. I love reading your comments. This is Tommaso Zilio of MusicDuty4Guitar.com and until next time, enjoy.